The micro bit X version 6 only requires assembling, there is no soldering at all to do on the board. As a result, almost anyone can assemble this radio, even with very little expertise. That being said, this is a tinkerer's radio, and many people upgrade and modify different aspects of this radio almost straight away. So, if you have no experience in electronics, soldering and desoldering, I would not recommend this radio. Why did I choose the Micro Bit X version 6 full kit as my first HF radio after getting my foundation license? The short answer is price. There are many radios that can do so much more, but at a far higher price. While I intend to eventually upgrade to a more expensive radio with all the bells and whistles they bring, for now I just wanted something that could do multi HF band at 10 watts with split side band and CW. I am still learning Morse code. I have only seen two radios that fit my initial requirements and while the Micro Bit X version 6 is the cheaper of the two at only 166 pounds, I felt this was the better of the two options. It has four built-in band pass filters, 3.5 to 5 MHz, 7 to 10 MHz, 14 to 21 MHz and 21 to 30 MHz. All bands, from 80 meters to 10 meters. For the CW key it supports, straight keys, plus, IMBK and B. It has easy touch screen operation and menu operation from the encoder knob. In addition to this, it lends itself to being easily upgradable as it uses an Arduino board for controlling everything. While support seems limited via HF signals there is a very handy blog group covering everything that has been done with the micro bit X and the many users are more than willing to offer advice, guidance, troubleshooting and recommendations in addition to the many videos available on YouTube. The only soldering that is required is for the power lead. As they only provide the plug, you will require the addition of 16 or 18 gauge wire, it is also recommended to fit an inline fuse holder with a 3 amp quick blow fuse. All the parts arrived very well packed in the box. A checklist detailing all the parts was also included. After checking everything was there, and correct, I proceeded with the build. Unfortunately no build instructions were included so I had to proceed slowly. Assembly was easy. First remove the rings off the jack sockets. Then screw the main board down ensuring that the jack sockets protrude from the front panel. Now refit the rings on the jack sockets. And install the encoder assembly on the front panel. Insert the Raduino board and screen. And screw the screen in place. Plug the encoder into the Raduino ensuring the black wire is on the right. Attach the volume and encoder knobs and secure with the screws ensuring that they do not rub on the case. The encoder pushes in slightly to select the menu item so will require a larger gap than the volume control. Place the USB extender socket on the back plate. Now secure it with the screws supplied. And plug the USB into the Arduino board. Attach the speaker to the top panel. And connect to the 2 pin connector beside the volume control. Attach the back panel and secure the BNC connector. Finally attach the top speaker panel ensuring that the vents are to the front above the screen. I did have extra screws and some other cables not pictured. The screws are just spares whereas the cables are for additional expansion and upgrades. I then had the one bit of soldering to do and that was the wire and fuse for the power supply. Finally I only had the software to install on the Arduino. As I did not really like the standard display that much, I found one more to my liking. I felt the new software I had found was more pleasing and it also had a space ready for my call sign. This was easy to locate and edit in the software. After making some labels for the front and tuning according to the video provided by Ashhar Farhan I was almost ready to begin using it. 
while I had managed to get the tuning very close I noticed that the data modes were still slightly out, so it needed a little finer tuning for FT8. Once done, using the USB lead used for programming I was able to trigger the transmit mode as a CAT interface emulating the FT817. Finally if you have enjoyed this video please don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell icon and select all, so you will be notified when I release new videos.